Hi, my name is Katie Smith. I am a lecturer in physiology at the University of Leeds and this talk will look at the control of the heartbeat. The heart and circulatory system are vital for supplying the organs with oxygen and nutrients and also for removing carbon dioxide and waste products. Mammals have a double circulatory system, so called because blood flows through two separate circuits. In one circuit, oxygenated blood from the lungs returns to the heart and is pumped around the body to the systemic organs. This is known as the systemic circuit. In the other distinct circuit, deoxygenated blood returns from the body back to the heart where it is then pumped to the lungs to collect oxygen. This is known as the pulmonary circuit. I'll now discuss the structure of the heart and how the structure allows the heart to perform a vital role so efficiently. The heart consists of four chambers, two atria situated above two larger ventricles. Blood enters the heart via the atria and is pumped out by the ventricles. The two sides of the heart, the left and right, are separated by an internal wall known as the septum. The right side of the heart is responsible for the pulmonary circulation. Here, deoxygenated blood enters the right atrium through a vein called the vena cava. At the same time, in the left side of the heart, which is responsible for the systemic circulation, oxygenated blood enters the left atrium via the pulmonary vein. Next, deoxygenated blood is then pumped out of the right ventricle to the lungs via the pulmonary artery. Likewise, the oxygenated blood is pumped out of the left ventricle via the aorta to the organs of the body. As the left ventricle pumps blood all around the body, the left ventricular wall is much thicker than that of the right ventricle to allow for a larger force generation. We'll now look at the sequence of events which occur in the heart through one full heartbeat. This is known as the cardiac cycle. The atria receive blood from the blood vessels. The atria then contract, propelling blood into the ventricles. After a short delay, the ventricles contract, forcing blood out of the heart and into the vasculature. The terms systole and diastole refer to cardiac contraction and relaxation respectively. As the ventricles are responsible for the biggest generation of force, these terms usually refer to ventricular contraction and ventricular relaxation. Blood moves through the heart according to pressure gradients. That is, it will move from an area of high pressure to an area of low pressure. Sometimes, however, during the cardiac cycle, the pressure gradient actually favours movement in the opposite direction. And as it is vital that blood only moves in one direction, this is where heart valves play an important role. There are four valves in the heart, two atrioventricular valves and two semilunar valves. The atrioventricular valves exist between the atria and the ventricles in both the left and right side of the heart. The valve between the left atria and the left ventricle has two cusps and is therefore called the bicuspid valve or it is sometimes known as the mitral valve. The valve in the right side of the heart has three cusps and is known as the tricuspid valve. These valves ensure blood flows from the atria to the ventricles, but not in the opposite direction. There are also valves on the major arteries leaving the heart. These are called semilunar valves. Specifically, there is a valve located between the right ventricle and the right pulmonary artery called the pulmonary valve and also between the left ventricle and the aorta. 
This is called the aortic valve. These valves allow blood to flow from the ventricles into the vessels, but not in the opposite direction. A heart disease can occur if there is a deformity in the heart valves, preventing them from closing properly. This is known as regurgitation. The heart valves are responsible for the characteristic lub-dub sound of the heartbeat, which can easily be heard using a stethoscope placed on the chest. After the atria contract, forcing blood from the atria to the ventricles, the atrioventricular valves close. This is responsible for the first heart sound. After ventricular contraction, once the blood has left the ventricles and entered the vessels, the semilunar valves close. This is responsible for the second heart sound. The cardiac cycle is regulated by electrical impulses. These impulses are generated from within the heart itself by specialist cells known as pacemaker cells. These cells control the speed of the cardiac cycle and therefore the heart rate. As the signal for impulse arises from within the muscle itself, the heart is considered myogenic. This is in contrast to skeletal muscle, which is considered neurogenic, as the trigger for impulse arises from the nervous system. Pacemaker cells are located throughout the heart, but are concentrated in two main areas. These are the sinoatrial node, which is at the top of the right atrium, and the atrioventricular node, which is located between the right atria and the right ventricle. The electrical events involved in a single heartbeat are as follows. Firstly, an impulse is generated at the sinoatrial node. This spreads through the atria, causing atrial contraction. The atria and ventricles are separated by a layer of fibrous tissue, which cannot transmit this wave of excitation. Instead, the impulse reaches the atrioventricular node, which triggers an action potential from here. The atrioventricular node generates impulses slower than that of the sinoatrial node, so there is a delay of around 0.1 seconds. This is vital to ensure that the ventricles contract after the atria. The impulse produced at the atrioventricular node is then transmitted down the septum via fibres known as the bundle of Hiss. Once the impulse has reached the apex of the heart, it travels through Purkinje fibres, which conduct the impulse to both the left and right ventricles, resulting in their contraction. It is the sinoatrial node which sets the rate of contraction which is usually around 70 impulses per minute, resulting in a normal heart rate of around 70 beats per minute. The atrioventricular node naturally produces around 50 impulses per minute. As the sinoatrial node fires impulses faster, it is the impulses from the sinoatrial node which triggers the action potential in the atrioventricular node rather than the spontaneous action of the atrioventricular node itself. Sometimes, for example, if the atrioventricular node becomes damaged, the signals between the two nodes become disconnected and the ventricles may only contract in response to the slower, spontaneous impulses set by the atrioventricular node. This is known as heart block. Clinicians can detect numerous cardiac conditions, such as heart block, using a technique known as electrocardiography, or ECG. An ECG is a non-invasive test whereby electrodes are placed on the skin to measure the spread of electrical current. There are three main sections to an ECG recording. The P wave, the QRS wave, and the T wave. 
The P wave reflects atrial depolarization, which occurs prior to atrial contraction. The QRS wave is due to ventricular depolarization, which occurs prior to ventricular contraction and hence is bigger than the P wave. Finally, the T wave reflects ventricular repolarization, which precedes ventricular relaxation. Atrial repolarization is hidden as it occurs at the same time as the QRS wave. Any changes within an ECG, whether it be in the shape, the amplitude of peaks, or the duration of intervals, can indicate cardiac abnormalities. A severe cardiac condition associated with an abnormal electrical rhythm is known as fibrillation. In this potentially fatal condition, the heart does not beat normally. Instead, it quivers uncontrollably and therefore does not pump blood effectively. Fibrillation often occurs following a myocardial infarction or a heart attack, which occurs as the heart does not receive sufficient oxygen due to inadequate blood flow through the coronary arteries. When fibrillation occurs, the patient must receive an electric shock administered by a defibrillator in order to restore normal cardiac rhythm. To summarise, the heart is central to the efficient functioning of the circulatory system. The heart is considered myogenic as the stimulus for action potentials arises from within the heart itself rather than from neurons. Pacemaker cells, which are concentrated within the sinoatrial node and the atrioventricular node, initiate and regulate the heart's rhythm. Abnormalities in the heart's electrical current can be detected in the clinical environment using an ECG. Thank you.